All right, how's it going, everybody? This is David with Worldwide Golf Shop here at Callaway Performance Center. I'm here with Garrett, one of the fitters here. We're gonna be looking at the new Paradigm family. Very excited to see what we have going on. Yeah, excited to see you hit them. You're one of the first people to come down here and hit the final finished product. So Perfect. watch you hit all the models that we offer and kind of see how they differ, see what your preference is. Sure. See if we can get one dialed in. Yeah, awesome, sounds great. So I'm gonna have you start out with the Triple Diamond Paradigm. It's the most similar to the driver that you're playing now, one of our competitor's drivers. Nine degree in loft, same shaft that's in your gamer. I always like starting with as few variables changed as possible, because right. if you hit it really good or hit it really bad, change two or three things at one time, you don't know necessarily which one to point to. That's the, the biggest cause of those differences. So let's start with a handful of shots, kind of see some numbers, get your feedback. Perfect. It sounds like you've had a lot of clubs over the years. Have you developed kind of preference visually when you look down at a driver liking certain shapes or certain yeah. face angles, anything catch your eye that you know you pick something up and you're like, ooh, I like that or I dislike that? I would say because I have a tendency to like push right or miss right, I don't want it to look too open, Okay. right? Like yeah. to me, it's just like, mm, scares me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, face angle is something we'll hear a lot of players comment on. Yeah. You know, it's got to look less open, it's gotta look more open. Yep, I, you know, and it's, I guess it's a fine line because I don't want it to look closed. Yeah, you like nice and square. I like them to sit square too. Yeah, just a little, it's a little intimidating, I guess. So drivers nowadays have a tremendous amount of adjustability. Face angle is one of the things you can adjust rather easily. Sure, yeah. Um, as you change the loft on a driver, you're going to change the face angle. Right, so they kind of they work yeah, together. Yeah, so if something starts where it sits too open, hopefully you've got room to go up in loft to get the face angle sitting more square sure. before you've negatively influenced the trajectory to sure. where it's not, not as efficient on distance. How would you rate that last strike there? Um, it's uh, Those last couple were kind of towards the toe, so okay. see if I can get one a little more square. Here's the money ball. I look like Pretty close to the middle, yeah? Yeah. Let's see the uh, impact. I'd say just there. a little closer to the toe. Yeah, right on the middle there. Uh, yeah, felt First good. First couple out on the toe. So as you're kind of just getting going, we factor that in a little bit, but maybe just give it kind of like a, you know, a warm-up factor yeah, and see if sure. you start you know, hitting hit more closer. out of the middle yep. of the face. I will say this, that shot that you hit a little left, yep. your path was fractionally left. Okay. And if you hit it on the toe like that, in years past, a lot of clubs would send the ball way left. Right. That ball was, you know, 40 feet left of the, of the okay. target that you're aiming at. So not entirely out of bounds, I guess. Yeah. 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 That's very nice. And you know what? That hitting your best shot as far as you can get it to fly with the most efficient ball speed, perfect launch and spin, that's one thing. A lot of clubs can do that now, but trying to get your, your worst shot in play, not, as, not losing as much distance right. either, that's where the, the, today's drivers yeah. are really good, seem to, seem to shine. Yeah, very consistent. I mean, especially in a game of misses that you know we want to obviously try and control as much as we possibly can. Your ball speed and your swing speed is creeping up too now the more okay. warmed up that you're getting. Yep. Mid 160s on that last one. Okay. Mid 160s again there that looked a little low on the face. Lower on the face is something you're more likely to do versus higher on the face. With how I'm coming into the ball if yeah. it's from the inside and and Yeah, your angles are pretty neutral right now. You're like a half degree up on the ball with okay. your attack angle and you know, that last one was 0.0, .0 on your path angle. Uh, so you're hovering real neutral okay. regardless of the hit location. And that's just basically leaving the face open a tad then. Right? The last yeah. one the face was a little open relative to the path, yes. Okay. Uh, obviously that one spun the most. Yep hit it low on the club face. So I don't look at that shot and say you need, you know, less loft. That was a 3,500 RPM of spin, which at your your ball speed in the mid 160s right now would be on the high side. The one prior you hit fantastic, 10 and a half launch. Okay. Set 16, almost 1,700 RPMs of spin. Okay. Which if you had more ball speed, and now that might sound greedy to some when I say if you had more ball speed than 165, because that's more than, you know, 99% of golfers. Right that would be a good combination of launch and spin. But when you're at 10 launch, 1600 spin, when you hit it really solidly, yep. you, you're kind of setting yourself up to get the most roll potential at the expense of some of the carry that you can get okay. if you launched it or spun it slightly higher. 
Definitely got that trend going right now. Low on the face, face yep. a little open. So there's a couple things I like and maybe some things I want to see a little bit different before okay. moving on to one of the other heads. Yep. One of them is the face angle relative to your path angle. Right. Your path is so neutral that if we can just get the face feeling like it times cool. a little bit better yep. than this setup right now, you'll hit it a little bit straighter. Cool. So we can, we can do two things basically to the driver. We can close the face a little bit. That's one thing. The second thing we can do is to move the center of gravity. And this is where it starts getting a little technical. Yeah. So there's adjustability on this triple diamond with uh, a weight on the sole right next to the face in the front of the club and then on the back of the flange there. Sure. So there's 14 grams right now in the front and okay. two in the back. Yep. So the CG is as close to the face as we can position it with the settings available on that club. And the more forward the center of gravity is, it tends to leave the face the most open. So it does a couple of things. Face angle gets more close and it pitches a little more loft on it. So the, the only thing that could work a little bit against us on that is when you hit it low on the face, mm -hmm. more weight back, the center of gravity is a little higher, it might start spinning more. Sure, okay, that makes sense. So we kind of have sense. a couple things fighting against each other to, right. to, to do that. So I would start with changing the face angle, see what we get out of that, and then move the center of gravity you know, if necessary. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's super important for, um, many people wouldn't know is just all the, you know, with the adjustable hosel, like how, how much you can really dial into your swing if you're gonna go through a fitting like this, just to know those little problem areas, I guess you would say, yeah. you know, in somebody's swing that you have a tendency to do this, like it might, it might be that simple as like yeah. a small tweet. You can take a club in, in some cases where it's like, put it into the used bin, I'm moving on to something else, <laughs> yeah. to a couple clicks of the wrench, it's yeah. your favorite club. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so changing the face angle, lofting it up, changing the lie angle more upright, those improved your dispersion like tremendously. Starting a little left, still falling to the right, but right. you know now you're a lot closer to the target line because it's more to the left and curving less pretty good dispersion, but it's still coming out of a relatively low window. So after hitting the other couple of heads that we've got, the other models, if it ends up being the triple diamond looks the best, we'd want to continue to fine tune that and see if we can get the launch and spin slightly higher, which should be pretty simple if we just start with a higher lofted head and do the same things that we did to this one. Um, but we might see some good things out of the standard paradigm because that one's got a very neutral shot shape. Okay. It's got some adjustability for shot shape as well. And the face angle, most players wouldn't look down at it and say it looks too open to them. So I think it's gonna suit your eye pretty well. Sounds great, let's give it a shot. I know the nine lofted up a little bit is a little on the, the low side. Yep. And I don't necessarily want to loft the paradigm up because it's probably gonna start looking close. Sure. Yeah, uh, sure. I'm, I'm keeping these things in the back of my mind okay. as you go through it, trying to get a loft that before seeing you hit it makes sense in my mind and a face angle that I think you're gonna look down and find appealing. Perfect. So this is just a 10.5. And a little adjustable weight there on the back. Adjustable sliding weight. It's not the longest sliding weight that you'd ever seen, but there is right. some adjustability there. But if you need like way more draw than this can play with the, the, the draw weight all the way to the heel. Yep. Um, we've got another model that has a little more draw bias. Right. And the reason that we didn't put a ton more track on there is because the more you slide the weight around the, the head to get more bias in it, it starts sliding the weight forward. So right. you start losing some of the MOI that yep. the whole concept behind the paradigm driver is trying, trying to hit. Sure. Most forgiving and most consistent driver that, that we've designed. So is, the, is this a different face or are they the same? I know it's, I mean, a, a little bit different design. Different on head it. size. Okay. Yeah, similar face technology. Gotcha. All the, the AI computer tech that our engineers kind of look at all the data on, the faces are engineered specific to the driver okay. in mind. That's very cool. It doesn't look more open, I would say. I mean, it does look more closed, but still pretty neutral top yeah, line. Yeah, this one's pretty new. If you put this one in the plus one, you know, where the triple diamond that we did that to looks pretty square, this right. one will look okay. like it's sitting closed a little bit. Yep. Yep. And then when you put it in the minus one, it doesn't flop way open. It sits pretty square here still. Cool. Yeah, it's very nice. So I would say the big benefit we're looking for out of this club versus the first one, which the first one was pretty efficient on yep. ball speed. You know, your smash factor was, you know, 1.5. Yep. On on that last head. We're looking for shot shape differences or preferences that you have maybe feeling like we're uh, eliminating some of the right miss that yep. the triple diamond had without just adding a bigger miss sure. somewhere else. Yep. If we can achieve that, then we kind of circle back and see did that benefit on shot shape come at the expense of uh, less ball speed, more right. spin, yep. worse launch angle. Yep. And sometimes you got to make trade-offs 
like that. And a lot of players at high speed, you know, you're in the middle of December here swinging cold almost up to 170 on your good ones. That's a lot of speed. Most players like yourself aren't trying to squeeze out every single yard that's available. They're we really trying to play. control yes. their shot shape. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, especially with a lot of the new releases over the last couple years, it seems like a better player, it would be more about getting it in play more often. Yeah, like, yeah when we're working with the, the tour players here, the PGA, the Corn Ferry guys, yeah. Um, LPGA, even champions, they talk a lot about start line, fall line, downrange dispersion, the back half of the flight, stuff that in, you know, the, the fittings that consumers go through, yeah. it's just not part of the conversation as often. I mean, yeah, it might How seem... far did it go? How fast did I swing? Right. That's a little more of the average Joe kind of. Yeah. It... Here's, here's the good news and here's the bad news about the standard paradigm. It's starting the most to the left. Yep. And it's. Uh, falling to the right, you haven't hit anything off to the left, yep. and it's the closest to the target line okay. by a long shot. The only problem is hitting it a little low on the face, yep. the standard paradigm gets exposed a little bit more okay. the triple diamond will, and that's because the center of gravity is a little bit deeper, so hit it low on the face. We'll talk a little technical again. The face is going to deflect down, sure. launch the ball lower, spin the ball higher. Okay, so it kind of starts rising late. Starts rising. You yep. probably saw that you know, with the naked eye there. It had a little right. more climb than the, yes. the first driver I had you hit. Definitely. I would say the players I've seen that love this have the hit location pattern or tendency the opposite of what yours is. Okay. If they don't hit in the middle, they kind of hit it closer to the crown, sure. to the top of the face. Okay. Yeah, way higher on the face, much higher launch angle. So if, if you're the type of player that can say, yeah, I can just do that. This driver works a little <laughs> bit better fix. for trajectory. Yeah. yeah. You still got the nice uh, shot shape, you know, started up the left, barely fell to the right. Now your launch comes up to 12 and okay. your spins in the mid 2000s, which is pretty efficient. Yep. And that ball carried farther. That one carried, you know, mid 270s. Gotcha. And that one was also not quite as fast off the face okay. as we were getting with the triple diamonds. So um, there's a lot of good things there. And then we might have overshot the target with that head yep. on the loft. Um, none of these have had the ball speed of the first driver. Now, the nice thing is if you hit it off center, it's not going to get way squirrely as far as direction because it's so high in MOI. It's our biggest footprint. Yeah, I, I could definitely tell, you know, kind of more... Yeah. Elongated. One for one. <laughs> yep, that looked nice. So your good ones with the first driver were all in the low to mid 160s, 62, 64. I think you might have had one at 60, 165 ball speed. The second driver where you're catching them a little low on the face but hitting them straight, they were all near 160, not, not sure. very many over 160. Yep. And we had, we were dealing with launch and spin that were way less efficient too. Yeah. That shot right there was 164, 10.5 launch, which is okay. a launch angle we're accustomed to seeing a lot of tour pros right. you know, like that window. 2200 RPMs of spin, perfect. So you would say that's that was a slight low on the face shot again. That's right, a no little low there. heel. That's been what happens if you don't flush it today. Um, but it was 161 ball speed, a little more ball speed than we saw in a miss hit from either of the other two drivers. Not surprised to see that out of the most robust and most forgiving head right. we've got. It did launch a little lower, seven, but in terms of distance, um, on a, a thin hit, it was one of your best ones. What did it, I mean, I guess, what is it? That was 290. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, some of your miss hits with the second head where it launched way low, spun way high, yep. were only 270. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess a little bit of a pull there maybe, but. Yeah, that's the only thing that's starting to show up as a, a knock against this head. Sure. It's starting left and not moving much. And that's the natural kind yeah. of bias of it that, for yeah. somebody that might be really sending it. Well, you're kind of more of a, get it starting a little left, falling right. So with the, the Paradigm X, you're starting it up the left, which is generally kind of what you like seeing, but yep. it's not curving back to the target as much. So you'd either have to accept that about it and right. say, okay, I play a little straighter ball, or we're kind of going back to one of the heads that wants to move back to the right, and then right. we try and fine tune the face angle and the CG and the loft. And your average distance with this, the Paradigm X, is the farthest of the three. Okay. 
your longest shots haven't been any longer with this. It's just the right. shot you hit low on the face. Main, this one maintains the, the best ball speed or closest to when you hit it solid. Yep. And it maintains the lowest amount of spin. It doesn't spike the spin up as much. And the other two drivers, the things we're fighting against is we've got two you know problems. The standard paradigm, when you hit it low on the face, it spins too much, so you lose a lot of distance. Yep. Triple diamond, when you catch it a little low and out toward the toe, it just it's a little more ball speed right. fluctuant. Okay, yeah. So you lose distance on the miss hits yep. because of the smaller head, less lower MOI. And I imagine all that kind of feeds into this like dispersion at the end of the day too, right? Yeah. I'd be spraying it all over, I guess, if I can't. Obviously, you can't find the middle, but there's certain characteristics yeah. of each of these things that might help or hurt that. I would say if we were going to rule one out entirely, it'd be the second one. Yes. You know, even though yeah. it was really good on shot shape, it's the shortest distance, and the other two aren't demonstrably worse on shot shape. They're right. just not. They're not perfect yet without, you know, continuing down the road of yeah. trying to adjust them to get them just right. So yeah, triple diamond, let's hit the 10-5. Okay. See if we can get it with the right shot shape like we did uh, lofting, you know, nine degree up and then see if the launch and spin on your good shots are better than the nine degree was. Perfect, let's do it. I'm gonna put it on the upright lie angle okay. and I'm gonna move the weight to the back. And the benefit potentially is that without needing to loft it up as much. Yep. You can get the launch and spin a little bit higher with the weight in the back. And then when you catch it a little on the toe, the MOI is gonna be increased ever okay. so slightly. So it might be a little more robust in terms of ball speed. Yeah, cool. Driver compared to having that heavy weight forward. Perfect. That felt good. I mean, that's yeah, a that shape that, good. that, I guess that right there is a shape that I would normally plan for. Yeah, that was one of your better okay. ball speeds on a fade. Yep and the launch was okay. That spin was creeping towards 3000, which was a little on the high side. Okay. And if you said, well, I don't want to err towards making that ball flight spin 2400, which would make the ball go about as far as you can get it to go. Yeah. Because by the time it doesn't curve at all, it's going to be 2000 or 1900 or sure. 1800. It'll drop so low. By the time it, it's a draw, it's going to be yeah. you know, <laughs> under 2000. And that's when we're back to those balls that don't carry very far. Right. Love that shot. Uh, that one was your longest total and about one of your longest carries in mid two, 270s for carry and okay. almost 310 total. I definitely like the 10 degree or 10 and a half degree starting head Yep. more than the nine. Yeah, it seems- Even on the nine set at plus one. Right. If you hit it straight, it went too low. You'd yeah. have to almost loft it up to two, de two degrees higher. Yeah, now your slight misses low on the face. Don't overspin. Right. They don't overfade. Right. Well, number one, I, I felt like I hit that one heel, but the, even, you know, yeah. it seemed like I still had that forgiveness that maybe I was getting in the X. Heavyweight back, upright lie angle, 10 yep. and a half loft. You've got the best combination of launch and spin on your good shots. Right. Good dispersion on your miss hits and now really good ball speed on a miss hit too, even though that's our smallest head. And yeah. your, your total distance here, 300 yards on average. Your long ones are almost 310, but on average, you're 300. Same as the X driver, that sure. was averaging 300 as well. But now we've got a shot shape that gets you down the fairway with you know right. starting left, falling to the right. On average, you're looking at uh, six feet to the right. I mean, we started with like 50 feet right. <laughs> really brought that in. And then you were about 40 feet left with the X, which is a no-no, you know, no-go for you. You know, this particular model, I like looking at this one the best. Uh, you mentioned increasing, like, you know, the loft, I believe this is 10.5. It's nice because I don't actually, like, notice that. Some yeah, people- it doesn't look like you're about to hit a chip. Right, yeah, some people might really see that and get scared of that, but I don't notice it much, and maybe that's what we did with the hosel here and kind of making it a little more upright. Overall, the looks, the feel, even the sound of this one is is something that you know I, I would I would certainly lean towards. I would you know would want to play this. Yeah, model. you you wouldn't believe how much work goes into the sound. You know, once we, once the performance gets engineered into the club, right? Is there some sort of sound issue that we need to kind of address and fix? And yeah, if we fix that, did we cause it to you know perform differently in some other aspects? So I'm glad to hear you say that because you know you're getting really good performance as well as liking intangibles about it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we just wrapped up our fitting here. Took me through, you know, all of the different models of the Paradigm line. And uh, honestly, I mean, I was very impressed. I, I, I like what we ended up in. All right, so we wanted to have you hit all of the Paradigm drivers, even if maybe you had a bias or a preference towards a certain uh, head shape or model. Sure. Um, and all of them had some features and benefits that were really good. Maybe the standard Paradigm you couldn't miss a fairway with, the uh, Paradigm X, 
your spin and your ball speed super robust on miss hits. Both of those had some trade-offs that, that we didn't find with the triple diamond. Uh, once we got to the right loft in the triple diamond, your good shots came off with the best launch and spin. And once we started uh, adjusting the lie angle to influence the start line and the, and the shot shape, same thing going for the weighting system on the back, heavier weight in the back versus the front, your consistency got a little bit better on yep. the miss hits, the ball speed and the spin. Right. And your shot shape was, was slightly improved as well. You didn't overfade it with the weight in the back. Sure. And that's, um, that's all before we even like dove into the shafts. We were sticking with the shaft that's in your current gamer that you really like. And that could be a whole another video in and of itself, right. going down the shaft road, trying different lengths, weights, shaft models, tip flexes, all the so things many, that yeah. um, are offered in the shaft world. Yeah, so many, I mean, so many different combinations there in terms of even just shafts. And to me, that really speaks to the importance of getting fit. You know, we have the luxury of being out here and this is great, but even if it's going to visit, you know, one of our Worldwide Golf Shops retail locations and going through a fitting there, maybe a 30 minute fitting, just to find what that combination and that best possible combination could be for you and your game, that little improvement is, is almost everything. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so you much. Got it.